Hi there. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Renz and I'd like to share to you a wonderful message that we can find in Mark chapter 5 verses 21 to 43. Today, however, I would like to share to you this message in a different approach. This approach is known as a monologue narrative approach wherein I will be telling you the story as if I am, I am the main character present at this time that it is happening. And when you listen to this message, it may be a new experience for you, but I hope and pray that with this new experience will come a new blessing for you as well. So I'd like to ask you to bow your heads and pray with me wherever you may be. And after I pray, I'd like you to see me not as Brother Renz, but as Brother Jairus, the ruler of the synagogue found in this story. Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, Lord, once again, we thank you and we praise you for this wonderful day. We thank you, Lord, for the beautiful sunshine and for the opportunity to talk more about you and to share your goodness unto us, Lord. Bless us with your spirit, Lord. This we pray. Amen. It was a fine morning when I was working in the synagogue. I was just going on about my day. I was going on and preparing the, the synagogue, the temple making sure that it was clean, making sure that everything was in order, and making sure that the service was ready to be done. However, everything that was in order suddenly changed when I heard the news that my daughter was about to pass. You see, my daughter had been suffering this illness. She had been suffering this sickness and Doctors tried to, to help her, to heal her, and to give her a new and better life. However, with all of their efforts, nothing was happening, nothing was working, and we were starting to lose hope. And at this very moment, my servants came to me and they told me, you need to go see your daughter, for her time is almost up. And at that moment, I realized you know, I can't give up. My daughter is about to pass, but I just cannot give up. There must be something that I can do. There must be something that God can do. And then I heard the story. I heard about the story of the man, the miraculous man that people knew as Jesus. The one who, were, who was healing the sick, the sick, the one who was going about teaching about the kingdom of the Lord, the one who was driving out demons. And I thought to myself, perhaps this man can do much better than all the doctors and all the, all the health practitioners. Perhaps he could give my daughter a new life. And so without further ado, I went and looked for Jesus. I went out and sought him. I went out and asked people, where can I find Jesus? And people immediately knew who, who, was, who was I talking about. People knew that who the man who I was looking for. And they said, you know, there's a big crowd over there. And we think they were, they're following the man who you're looking for. We think that the reason why this crowd is gathering together is because of this very same man that you are in search for. And so I went. And surely enough, there were hundreds and probably thousands of people gathered in that place. It was just jam-packed, and it was difficult to go wherever, um, to go in the center of it, and to try and reach the man that they were gathering there for. But because of my daughter, because I didn't want to give up, I still tried to reach out to him. I had to make my way with the hundreds of people that are in front of me, I had to push people around. I had to try and maneuver my way. And eventually, by God's grace, I was able to reach the house where Jesus was currently resting in. And I knocked and the door was open. And there many people were also crying out to Jesus the same way I wanted to cry out to him. Many sick are there asking for healing. Many who are in search of knowledge are there asking for teachings. And when I had my opportunity, I cried out to Jesus and I said, Lord, 
My daughter is in much trouble. She is very ill and she is about to pass away. Lord, I'm losing hope with my child. And I can see in Jesus' face that he had sympathy and compassion for me. And immediately he rose up and said, come, lead me to where your daughter is. And so with much excitement in my heart, I knew that I have a new hope. I have a new chance for my daughter to live again. Jesus is coming with me. And I was so overjoyed that I just pushed people around and said, please make way. It's time for me. It's time for Jesus to come with me and heal my daughter. And so we went. However, the journey there wasn't very fast. We didn't get there right away. Um, because of the amount of people that were there, you know, taking our time to get there took a while because Jesus would be, um, he would be stopped by the people. He would be asked to heal them. And because Jesus was a very sympathetic man, he would take his time and cater to the request of these people. And, you know, I was starting to be impatient, but I told myself, you know, I, I have to respect Jesus Christ. I know I have a request from him, but I have a request just the same as these people do. And he is just trying to cater for them. And so even though I was, I wanted him to just go straight to my place, I stay patient. And so we continued to journey. We walked even though people were gathering us all over in all corners. And, you know, this started to become repetitive. And people were touching us. People were trying to reach Jesus Christ. And then suddenly Jesus Christ paused on his walk. Jesus Christ stopped for a moment and then he said, Who touched me? He asked the question, Who touched me? And when I heard it, I thought that he was just trying to joke around, that he was just trying to make, to make light of the situation. Because like I've told you, many people were trying to reach out for Jesus. Many people were trying to get a hold of him and ask him to stop for him, for them and to give them the healing that they're in need of. And for Jesus to ask a question, which was so obvious, he was asking, who touched me? When literally hundreds of people were touching him at that time. But then right at that very moment, I realized what Jesus was talking about. You see, there was a woman. There was a woman who wanted to be healed of her sickness but her sickness was far greater than anyone could ever imagine. Jesus told the woman, or Jesus said, who touched me? And then this woman came up to him and tried to explain herself. And what she said at that moment, you know, it was amazing. I was standing there, I'm standing there and, and Jesus is looking at this woman and the woman is looking back at Jesus. And the woman just said to Jesus, Lord, I have been ill of an uncontrolled blood flow for 12 years. And with all these people gathering around looking for you in search of you, I just knew that what I needed to do, even though I could just touch the bottom of your garment, just a fragment of it, I would be healed. And in that time, as I was starting to be impatient, I realized that, you know, other people are also in search of Jesus. Everyone is looking for the same thing. Everyone is in search of the true healing that can only be found in Jesus. And even though I was starting to be impatient, instead of being impatient, that impatient quickly turned into even more hope. That impatient quickly turned into more joy. Because then and there, I saw the power of Jesus working right in front of my eyes. Then and there, I saw the power of the Son of God working right in front of my eyes. 
and I knew that I came and looked for the right man. I came and knew that what I was trying to do was for the good of my daughter. And after Jesus and the woman had their conversation, Jesus ended it with saying, Go, for, for your faith has made you well. Your faith has healed you, not only of your sickness, but of your sins. And with this, I knew that Jesus was not just any kind of miracle man, that Jesus had so much more to offer. And by being able to invite him to my household, I knew that he will not only, he will not only heal my daughter, but I knew that there was so much more that he could give to my family. And so with so much excitement, I urged him to continue our journey to my house. I urged him to continue following me to my daughter. But the moment that we re restarted our journey towards my house, then and there, one of my servants came up and he told me, Good sir, we are sorry, but your daughter has already passed away. Sir, we are sorry, but it's too late. Sir, it's sorry, we're sorry. There's no more hope for your daughter. And when I heard these words, doubt started to rise again in me. Doubt started to rise again in me. I've just seen how God worked, how Jesus Christ fulfilled his mission here on earth. The same Messiah that has been prophesied long time ago, I've seen it working in front of my eyes, but the moment of the moment that my servant has come up to me, doubt started to feel my thoughts again. But you know what's amazing? Jesus Christ didn't let me, didn't let my doubt consume me or overpower me. Immediately he told me, immediately he told my servant, said, do not be afraid, do not worry, for the child is just asleep. So let us continue our journey. And with that, with Jesus saying the very same words, it gave me new hope. You see, I started to realize that my hope is not based on what I see, but my hope is based on what Jesus can do. My hope is not based on the things that are happening around me, but my hope is based on what could happen around me. And when Jesus knew that my hope was real, he will not let any doubt or any trouble stop me from believing him. And so you, you can tell my excitement has been a roller coaster ride. It has been up and down, but we continued our journey and we go on into this, to our path to my house. And as we are journeying there, even from far away, as we start to get closer, we can already hear the mourners. We can already hear women singing sad songs in light of my daughter. Then I started to lose hope again. I started to lose hope again. I started to hear how they were singing and crying out for my daughter, knowing that this custom was because it was true that my daughter has passed away. It was true that there was no more hope for my daughter. You know, these, these women who were singing mourn songs for my daughter, they have been doing this. This has been their, their livelihood. And this is what they do. And they are sure when someone has already passed away. So how, what can I do? You see, doubt started to fill me again. But we press on because I knew that Jesus Christ was with me. I knew that this time it was different. Yes, they have been mourning for dead for a long time. But before they didn't have Jesus Christ. But now I have Jesus beside me. And so we continued. And when we, when we had reached our place, Jesus had asked everyone to move out and to give us a personal time with my daughter. When he had asked this, I thought that he was going to wish us um, a prayer. I thought that he was going to 
to, to confirm that my daughter had left. But Jesus, he, that wasn't what his plan was. He had told the people to, to leave. He had told the people to move away. And, and Jesus was being discouraged by the people. The people were saying, why are you telling us to leave? Why are you making us leave when you know that th this, this young girl has already gone away? When you know that there's no hope for this young girl? And friends, at that time, I started to believe what the people were saying. But still, my eyes were focused on Jesus. I wanted to see what he was going to do in this situation. I wanted to see the hope that he has in this situation. I wanted to see the, the other things, the great miracle that he can do. The same miracles that he has performed in the people in the past that I have seen and I have heard. I wanted to see it for myself. I wanted to know and I wanted to see Jesus performing a miracle in my life. And so I followed every command that Jesus did. We have sent the people away and I, even though they were mock, mocking Jesus, laughing at him, I pushed all those thoughts away. And at this moment, I just patiently and faithfully listened and looked at what Jesus did. You see, it was the most intimate thing that he that I have ever seen in my life. Then and there, Jesus Christ, He went up to my daughter, took and lowered Himself, touched the daughter's hand, my daughter's hand, and she said, young lad, wake up, rise up. It's time for you to get ready. It's time for you to get up. It's time for you to wake up from your sleep. It's time for you to move on from this, this time of rest. And at that time, I realized that the miracle that I was looking for can only be found when my faith is true up until the very end. You see, then and there I realized these people who were mourning for my daughter, it's not about what they think is right. These people who were mourning for my daughter at the time, yes, it's what they've done their whole lives. But you see, they're not the one who is in charge of my daughter's life. They're not the one who is in charge and who is to say this person is dead or that person is dead. For Jesus Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And with this in mind, I realize what he meant. That it's not about our lives that dictates who we are in our lives. It's not about the things that we do. It's not about the things that happen to us. But it's how Jesus Christ comes into your life, comes in our lives, and dictates what is best for us. It's not about what people have to say. It's not about what people have to do. It's all about what Jesus wants to happen in your life. The journey to this time, from the moment I had heard about my daughter's illness and had asked Jesus Christ to come and save her, it had been everything around me had just been discouragements and discouragements. At first, I thought that there was no hope for my daughter because no physician could heal her. And then when I had found Jesus Christ, it took a long time to reach my daughter because of all the people who were trying to stop our tracks. And then when we were actually about to get there again, another discouragement was told and it said, my servant told me, you know, your daughter has already passed away and that it's too late. And then when we got there, there was proof because mourners, professional mourners, were already crying out for my daughter. And in each step, I had every reason to doubt that hope can be found. I had every reason to doubt that there is still life found in my daughter. 
And you see, friends, it's amazing that I was able to stand through and stay faithful during that time. And I want to tell you that it's not because I was able to stand, to stand strong, that I was able to stay true to my faith, but it was because I knew that Jesus Christ was beside me. In every moment that there was a discouragement, Jesus Christ came into my life. When there was no physician that was found that could heal my daughter, Jesus was there. When I was asking Him to help me, even though he, I knew that, and I could see that He was tired, immediately He stood up and followed me and went with me. When people were stopping Him from His tracks, there was a woman who I saw God work, and I saw that Jesus Christ was real, and I saw that His powers were real, and I saw that He was true and He was the real Messiah. And again, from discouragement, I had hope. And when I heard the news that my daughter had already passed, Jesus comforted me. And he said, no, she has not. She is just sleeping. You see, our lives will be full of discouragement. And in this time, you know, I realized that our faith is not based on what we see, but our faith, our faith should be based on what Jesus can do. In the lesson in my story, of my daughter. I hope that you can learn that faith is not about what is currently going on around us. Faith is not based on whether you're succeeding in your classes or whether you don't have a job right now or whether your relationship is not working right now. Faith is not based on the current success, on the current struggles that you are going through today. But your faith on Jesus Christ is based on the things that He is able to do with you. Faith is seeing things that has not yet happened, but is about to come. And faith can only be given to Jesus Christ. Only He is worthy to receive our faith. And only He can give a result and answer back the faith that we are giving Him. Only in Jesus Christ can we find that hope that we are looking for. Friends, I hope and pray that in my story, I can inspire you and encourage you, especially in times of trouble right now, to stay faithful, to stay true to the Lord. Even though things are not working out, even though things may seem like there's no hope anymore, believe that Jesus Christ can do something greater than we could ever imagine. Jesus Christ can give you a new life, a new beginning, and a new livelihood. One that will make you happy for an everlasting time. Let us bow our heads for prayer. Lord, O oh Lord, we thank you for giving Jesus Christ on the cross. We thank you, Lord, for all the times that we are discouraged. Because, Lord, Jesus Christ comes to encourage us. We thank you, Lord, for all the times that we doubt because Jesus Christ comes and reaffirms us. We thank you, Lord, for the times where we question for Jesus Christ always has an answer. Lord, our faith is not based on the things that are happening around us, but our faith is based on the things that you can do and Jesus Christ can do. And we know that Jesus Christ will soon return again to bring us home. That is where our faith is, Lord. In you, our Creator and our Savior, this we pray. Amen.